So what what have you been up to? Let me let me calm down. Let I mean, shoot, man, been been doing a lot. Uh, you know, black spaces, everything. You know, representing uh, a lot of the diasporic young black folk and giving them opportunities to you know occupy spaces in the city, be creative, be expressive. Mm -hmm. You know, all the way you know from Vancouver to Kampala. I'm here to continue the same mission. You know, continue to heighten our vibration of like authentic indigenous. You know what I mean? Creative, artistic, expressive, to actually be able to, you know, contribute more to that vibrancy that we need to be, you know, authentically black, authentically African, and doing our thing. You you know, like you're spitting. Respect, bro. You sound like you're spitting. Uh, yeah. You know, how, 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 <laughs> do you know a guy called Chiwanuka? Uh, the, the musician? Yeah, the musician. Yeah, I've heard of his you know music. Yeah, 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 yeah. From London? Yeah, from London. Yeah, yeah, I've heard his music. What do you guys think about him? You know, uh, I uh, think uh, African. I think his music is very, very like uh, artistic. He has he his a... second highest selling album. Definitely. To date. Yes, man. And he's, he's now in, in series. You watch like famous series. He's in movies as well. There's a movie about like uh, the, uh, the Beatles music before. And he was in it. He actually had a small role where he acted. So I'm, I'm just proud, you know. Of, what do you guys think about thing. the Ugandan music out there? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's different ways you can look at it, man. You you have our local, you know, ideologies, and then you got those that do the actual world music or try to fit it on a global scale. Mm -hmm. And I think, and then you have artists in the diaspora. So there's like different sections you have to look at it from. Have we grown as a as a country in regards to our music? Uh, in regards to expressiveness of music, I think there's a level of growth. Uh, in regards to systems, zero. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, you, you, you'll you notice that most of the artists are getting political, right? you know, in their music, they uh, try and mention one thing or another about politics. Is it good for the industry? I think the word you use is politics. Mm -hmm. and, politics and, so, yeah. and, and so to be an artist, you know, it's, it's not necessarily that you have to be a political artist. Your job is to reflect the times. Mm -hmm. And so just because you're reflecting the times, it doesn't mirror, necessarily yeah, mirror, yeah. yeah, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're rallying for any political space. You're just speaking on how your environment is feeling and how people are expressing themselves. And I think that most often people try to like be like, oh, political music means that we are creating awareness, we're going against. Mm. You know, uh, music is supposed to give us that power to think and develop our critical mass to, you know, change the things we want to change around ourselves, you know, starting with ourselves in our communities. So I think that, uh, you know, to look at it as um, artists going political is just a misguidance so for a lot of the Ugandan folk to just think that, you know, just because you're speaking out for the people, all of a sudden you're political. It's supposed to be art. It's mm -hmm. music. That's what it does. And that's what you're it's... You're basically your mirror, right? Yeah, yeah. You mirror your reality, man. Your day-to-day. -day. That's what music is about. So The you reality see... is this. This is what I'm trying yeah, to Yeah, man. You walk out right now and some craziness is happening. Well, tomorrow you'll write about it. It's what's going to come up in your space of creativity. So, you know, at the end of the day, art reflects, or art, they say art imitates life. You know what I'm saying? And an artist is supposed to be expressing that in between so that people could be able to choose, you know, where they stand, how they feel, you know, so where I they was, come from. I was, I was listening to Ryong a while ago. Ryong was on a, a series show that he, uh, he selected. And he said a couple of things. He said that uh, uh, for a minute, uh, artists have been doing stuff, they do all the right thing, they, they have good music, uh, quote unquote, but uh, it takes a lot, you know, it, 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 it's up to recent when he had, you know, big trail with party after party, yeah. that, you know, you, do you think it's hip hop time? You think um, we, we need to be careful. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> the the hip hop time and hip hop like oh, <laughs> rising. You should need to look at the song party after party, right? It's a song that came out of a meme. Mm -hmm. And today, if if you kind of that artist is gonna jump on memes, you could be relevant, right? But the song is big. Big truly is good, right? Good friend of mine. Shout out to him, by the way. But the song also showed up mostly because of the fact that it's a meme. And when you have a meme, and that's Kenyans actually, you're Kenyan now, right? So you understand Kenyans today are riding that meme wave. When there's a minister that says something funny, when there's a president that maybe says, I don't know, uh, uh, belittle yourself and says it in a funny way, and then they ride that wave. But hip-hop in Uganda still needs the foundation, you know? It needs it needs that support because there's good hip-hop guys, you know? But, but listen. Baba Luke is in the studio, man. But, but Respect, listen. bro. But, but listen, we've been riding on that for a very long time. On what? That, you know, uh, what you're saying, you know, originality, you know, have some character in your... Your ish, 
party after party came through and you know all of a sudden it's you know uh it's it, it has given a platform and that's what rion has been saying you know yeah talk about you know it's more like but aside from party after party not to cut you short aside from party after party which song which other hip-hop song is blazing in UG, for instance. And that's what I'm saying. Which other song? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Exactly, bro. We're on the same page. Ba -ba -ba yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> ba -ba that, 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 that's where the imbalance is. The fact that you can't, you're on a radio and you can't give another song next to that. Exactly. That should show you that there's a, a powerless notion mm -hmm. in the space. You understand me? So just because so, you're writing so a commercial what, web, you know, yeah. it doesn't relevate the growth of the industry. That's just a pop culture effect. It's yeah. like a, it's a glimpse. It comes yeah. like, you so, write it and it fades away. You write it and it fades away, and no one could stand on that to build. But you need a platform. I think. I think to a certain degree, uh, uh, such songs give a platform. And well, no, they have their role. So remember, we're using the word pop, and the other word we're using is commercial, mm. right? Mm. Both of those two things serve a certain agenda. Mm. They have both the positives and, ne and the negatives. If uh, if a conscious artist is doing a pop song. They know exactly what they're doing, yeah. but they have a foundation of where they're coming from. And if you shook their foundation, you'll be like, oh, yo, yeah, that's a strong MC, man. But they did that jam because they were playing with A plus B and D, yeah. you know? I, but I have, a if, question. I, have, I, have, I have a question for both of you. Does uh, hip hop as a genre have a space in your country? We here, man. What you mean? Is that, is that a good question? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a very irrelevant question. I know you will say, yeah, we're here. We're here, but you know, uh, at the same time, we're talking about you know party after party, you know, giving a platform. So for I'm going to tell you what's funny. Uh -huh. You understand that every sound wave you're listening in the day has a hip hop element to it. Like oh, I know. So when, when you, you understand that all the little young kids that are on the scene today, all of them are borrowing hip hop elements exactly. and margin them to actually cross over. Yeah. Now you see that before it was crazy dance over, but now like everyone's got that that little like either what, what are they copying uh Fefe or Fig for Maker yeah, yeah, or yeah. you know or GNL or whatever. Exactly. Whoever they're emulating it's a hip hop tonality yeah. mm -hmm. that's taking the airwaves with the of course, Nigerian emulated sound, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That yes. new ride, you know, that heavy tone, you know, mm -hmm. doom, doom, you know what I mean? The other so, day, I, I, I was listening to, uh, what's his name, Bonavoy, and uh, they were asking him about the African sound. And, uh, you know, they have compared this guy to so many people, you know, Fela Kuti is mm. one person that you can compare to. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and when you look at him, even the way he performs, there's some fella Kuti uh, ish in him. Do you think is giving uh, Africans a sound? Do you think that, you know, it's giving Africans a rhythm? As, I think definitely Burner Boy's success has really given a huge stake to and, and, and boost to Africans in general, 100%. Because he's by far the artist who has actually really broken down barriers. Like, you know, going to spaces where Africans have not been in. Because mostly African music reaches Africans and people who like African music in the diaspora. But now Burner Boy's music is, has really crossed over to places where we weren't in that space. And it's a really good thing and he's very humble about it. And that's why I think the whole Fela Kuti thing is because his, I don't know, his mom, the dad of his mom, or his granddad was actually managing Fela Kuti actually. So he, he was in that space of, you know, the greatness dad. from when, the, the granddad. Not that dad, I think. I, I'm not sure. I won't really stamp on it, but someone in his family from like back in the day was managing fella you didn't ask the question uh, uh african yeah. he answered it in his, in in his, his own way, yeah. way. Mm -hmm. uh hip-hop as a genre yes in, in uganda do you think we have a space because people, i think I, i'll give an example people like navi navi has been here for a minute yeah but if i'm to ask you which song like uh you do you identify with navi oh you that's the one that i remember mm -hmm. yeah. well, <laughs> oh shook man i mean there's there's a lot you know, uh, what is that name for it, Ajay? Yeah, that was a good song, by the you know way. What I'm saying. Because you are hip hop arts. No, but like, you know, but of the, course you're asking about yeah. hip hop. Yeah. What else you want us to be? <laughs> but like Babaluku said, I have to side with him. There is a lot of space for hip hop in Uganda, right? There's a first of all, there's a lot of talent. When you go down, down in deep, deep down in Kampala and back in the in the in the diaspora as well, there's a lot of good hip hop artists, right? But the thing is, I, I still go back, right, to the fact that is hip hop a genre as Africans? 
You know, most of his acts. Banner Boy, for example, Banner Boy was not. Uh, Bro. He was not doing, you know, uh, the genre that he's doing right now, originally. Bro. We didn't identify him with that. We identified with him. Um, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, your uh, question uh, is going far, but I see uh, your I question. It. But I want to tell you when you go to a club in Uganda today, right? A DJ will play a lot of African music, right? But there's a part he reaches and he plays with some Chris Brown. Some, I don't know, I don't know, um, I don't know. Uh, what the hell? No. Where did that? No. Five, four, three, all these kinds of music. That's all hip hop, right? In a different style, but it's hip hop. Why do they play hip hop from America? If you have. There's a song of Big Trill that I always remember. It goes like. I'll be your inside, outside. I will be all over the place. It's an old song. Big Him and some girl called Big Up. To big up. Big up. Uh-huh. It was a very good song, and for many, for a lot of times, I had it on 88.2, right? Mm-hmm. Driving. This was many years ago in Uganda, maybe some 10, 15 years ago before I traveled. And I, and I said, Who made this song? It's a really dope song, but it was a Ugandan song. You get me? Now, the thing is, I've realized that, I'll give you an example just of my artist, Mugaba, right? Mugaba, when people didn't know who he was, he had In My Bed, which was a big tune. Mm-hmm. Guys were like, this is a big tune, right? Who is this guy? Now then I give you another boy called Joe Boy. You know Joe Boy, right? I know, I know Joe Boy. Who sang the baby song. Yeah. Now Joe Boy came to Uganda with one song, bro. Baba Luku, he came here with one song. That's the song people paid money for, to watch him for, right? But do you know why? Because as Ugandans, we have this complex of Omotu Baba Veri. Nga Veri. Mbu Nigeria, Mbu America, Mbu Atewakabi. But they have one, one. one. Listen, listen. <coughs> but, but, real but, talk, bro. But, but, we but, pop yeah, 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 yeah. Real talk, real yes, talk. Man. But this, this kids, these guys have worked for that, you know, for that clout. Like which ones? The Nigerians. No, they have. But I'm talking about this. I'm giving. I just gave you a small example. You mentioned the Joe, the one boy, right? Mm-hmm. But also these kids. Like every every artist, has a story, right? Jalu, every artist has a story. Mugaba, for instance, I picked him up when he has like I don't know. 9, 10, 12 years So yeah, basically yeah. what are you telling people? What are you I'm telling saying, Ugandans? I'm saying because Ugandan industry is quote unquote run by DJs, right? The you cast, as people Like the DJ cast The DJ cast is right Because <laughs> that the, the, the artist Bagu Mika Wakasi Never in the 2 a.m. Cassie is, oh, you, but the Cassie has it rough because artists walk into the club, right? And they tell them to play my music. And they're all waiting in the line for him to play their song. So I really feel sorry. I would never want to be a DJ in UG, man. Real talk. <laughs> but also the DJs listen to some people they listen to radio right and the radio plays some songs often and the DJs know these songs Zeziriko you get me <coughs> and that's why songs get played so if I think for me right today the problem with hip-hop not going far in my opinion in Uganda is because hip-hop artists some of them release not good productions Babalu, the song sounds good but not good Babalu, productions. what do you Tell the policy makers we in South Africa 90% they have a 90% policy where they yeah. play uh, South African music so literally as someone who participated in our uh, spearheading our uh, local content to be played on radio especially from the hip-hop journal uh, I think that um, I don't I don't like to point fingers anymore because I think by the, by this time we as hip-hop communities and, and hip-hop lovers should be owning our own media mm. so first and foremost I would like to like put that out there uh, but for the establishments that are present uh, they're fighting with a force that is coming mm. that's all that's how I feel it's like you will not deny the hip-hop voice like you denied it like 15 years ago and now it's what you're using to do commercials it's what you're using like even like dancehall artists are dressing like hip-hop artists like the influence is deep mm-hmm. except that people are now relating to the fragments that they're picking from the culture but what are you doing to this effect like what are you doing uh personally man i'm always spearheading like putting bringing people together to find new waves of being in our own space to own our el- own everything man like we we're not here to beg radios to put us on uh, it's, it's, a, it's high time that we mobilize young creatives to build our own industry and that's why i say that there's no systems if you recall that from my yeah. earlier conversation, mm-hmm. I said the only thing we're lacking now is systems that shift the paradigm. Mm-hmm. But the talent is here. We're like in a gold mine space whereby anyone who comes here with the right intent can shoot off with dope talent. You know, there's enough clout for individuals to create a whole new contributive sector to the music. Listen, when we did Luga Flow, nobody thought that that thing would be here. For real. They thought it was going to die out. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of haters, I mean, newspapers wrote about it. Like, all those guys are rapping local. What are they doing? You know what I mean? But look where we are. You, you know, know what I mean? We, 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 Africa's moving towards reclaiming our space. And you know, and, and you the know. more we do that, the more you as 
institutionalized spaces as media are going to be changing your content too. Yes, bro. Because we want more of ours. Respect. We want more that looks like us. That is so beautiful, you know. Uh, before we get back to music, you know, for I, I'm one of those guys that uh, was so against uh, trap music. Trap music. When trap music <laughs> came out, I was like, what is this? All the lyrics, huh? You know, it sounded so fake. I'm old school, you know. I, I, I'm a guy, when you talk about hip hop, I need to hear what you're saying. And what, ha, and what has to be a what. Mm. But these guys own their own <coughs> industry. They love, they support their industry. Mm. And in that, like, it, by you owning and supporting and actually loving what your people do, it is very important. You know, like it, 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 it sold it. At the end of the day, you know, we play trap music. We should start doing what you guys are talking about. We jam here when you sign your family. We got DJ Casio, the ones and twos. If you want to get in the mix, we got Baba Luku, the OG in the building. We got African, you know, Mosama original. I say that when this guy's in the building.